Hi, this is Bruce with Animated Prop Systems, and today we're going to talk about how we built the butler on a track prop. Now, this prop was made to sit on a table in a second story window, and he would start uh, out of view of the window, and he would then roll down the track out in front of the window, and he would uh, be looking out the window now, and his torso turns, and his head moves, and his eyes moves, and he, uh, he's got some light pointing up at his face, so it gives kind of a creepy look to him. And uh, he does his, his movements for a minute, and then he rolls back out of sight again. So that's what this prop does, and I'm going to show you how we made this. Now, there's three main parts of this prop. There's the track, there's the base that moves on the track, and then there's the torso which is its own self-contained unit, and I'm going to remove that now so we can talk about the track and the base. Okay, the bottom here is a piece of three-quarter inch particle board, and for the rails that the base will ride upon, I've used an uh, inch and a half L-shaped aluminum stock, and then to that I've bolted a U-shaped aluminum stock, and I'll talk about why I did that in just a second. The base itself, which rolls, is made out of a three-quarter inch piece of MDF. And then on the bottom for the wheels, I've used another one-inch piece of aluminum L-stock. And for the wheels, I've used these uh, bearing wheels that are made for sliding doors, um, sliding glass doors and sliding screen doors. And these wheels have a little slot on them, and uh, they just ride right on top of this aluminum stock. Now, a second ago, I was talking about this U-shaped piece, and the reason I did that was because when I first built this, I didn't know whether the torso would be so heavy that it would make this thing tilt. So, the U-shaped stock gives me the ability to put another wheel underneath to prevent it from tilting if necessary. In the end, the torso was so heavy, it proved to be not necessary, but in your case, it may be different. Now, in order to make the base move, uh, I'm using a 12-volt gear mortar, and I'm using a what's called a timing belt, which is a quarter-inch wide rubber belt that's got teeth on it. On the motor, I've got a, a timing pulley that's attached to the shaft of the motor, and this belt goes all the way down to the, the other end, where a matching ribbed timing pulley is, only this one's not attached to the shaft of the motor, it's just got a quarter inch bolt going through there. And this belt uh, is not a continuous loop. It just comes down, wraps around, and both ends of the belt are attached to the base right here. Now in order for the controller to know where on the track the base is, I've used two optical sensors. One is right here, and one is down at the other end. And on each end of the base, I've got a piece of metal that I call a blade, that when the base moves through the gap of this optical sensor, it breaks a beam and tells the controller that it's either at the near end or the far end of the track. This is a picture of the type of optical switch I used, which are also called photo interrupters or slot switches or gap switches. One side of the sensor has an LED that shoots a beam of light to the other side, which is a transistor switch. When the gap is clear, the switch is on, and when the beam is broken, the switch turns off. The switch I used was an Optec OPB811W55, which has a gap of about 3 eighths of an inch. There's lots of different versions of this type of switch, but they all work about the same, and you can get them online from places like Jameco or Mauser or DigiKey for somewhere between 2 and $4. You just need to want, look for one that has a gap of at least a quarter of an inch, otherwise it'll be difficult to build your system with enough accuracy so that whatever breaks the beam actually goes through the gap each time instead of hitting the side of the switch. Electrically, this is what the sensor looks like. You have an LED on the left and the photo transistor on the right. This is identical to how a normal MPN transistor works except that Instead of a signal tied directly to the base of the transistor, you've got an LED acting as the signal into the base. In order to use this sensor, I tied the anode of the LED to 5 volts through a 180 ohm resistor, 
and I tied the cathode to ground. On the transistor side, I tied the collector up to 5 volts through a 22K ohm resistor and tied the emitter to ground. The signal out pin is tied directly to the collector and uh, when the gap in the sensor is clear, the transistor is on and the signal will be pulled down to about zero volts. And when the gap is blocked, the transistor will be off and the output will be pulled up to about five volts. The controller for this prop, for the base, is based on Arduino. Uh, there's three parts to this. There's the Arduino Uno board, there's the motor controller board, which is made by Palulo, uh, and this is specifically designed for the Arduino board. And then this is just a plain shield that I got from SparkFun that I used to attach the two sensors to. So I'll go ahead and put this back together. And the two sensors, one for the near near sensor and one for the far sensor get attached here on the top of this shield like this. I've got 9 volts that goes to the Arduino board and then I've got a separate power connector for the DC gear motor which is um, 12 volts and I forgot to mention that it's 152 RPM and that gets 12 volts. So once I power this up the Arduino will move the base uh, down to this end until this sensor is broken and then it'll wait there for a little while and then it'll move it to the far end until that sensor is triggered and it'll wait for the torso to do all its movements and then it'll move it back to this end and it'll just complete that loop over and over again. So that's all this thing does is run an endless loop of moving it to one end, stopping, move it to the other end and stopping. Um, when it's at the far end, the torso will do all its movements, and I'll talk about that in part two of this video. Now, if you're interested in the code I wrote for the Arduino to control the DC motor for the base, I'll give you a link at the end of this video so you can get the code. Okay, now I've reassembled the entire system and put the, put the belt back on the, the base. So now I'm going to turn on the Arduino, and the first thing it's going to do is move the cart down to this end until it gets to this sensor and then it's going to slow down and stop. Now, so this is the position where the torso would be out of sight of the window. So it's going to sit here for however long you want it and it's going to move down to that end until it gets to that sensor and it's going to slow down and stop. Now this is where the torso would be in front of the window. So it's going to wait long enough for the torso to go through its movements and then that's going to finish and it's going to move the base right back here until it gets to the sensor again and again it's just going to slow down and stop and then we start the whole routine over again. So that's how the base operates.